there's no tablet in the sky that said it had to be simple to end up being complex. It's just a remarkable fact about the universe. So why not celebrate it? The fact that pi, pi, that, that pi, pi, right? Let's, let's say the numbers together. 3.1451. We got a few. That's so okay. That's a nerd fact. We got a deep thing going on over there. Not I thought. bad. Not bad. The fact that you take a circle of any size, a circle the size of the universe itself, and divide it by its own radius, and you get that number. That's beautiful. I have to pause, and I, I get misty thinking of this. <laughs> it's not. That's just, just another one. Another one. That the atoms and molecules in your body are traceable to the crucibles in the centers of stars that manufactured these elements over its lifespan, went unstable on death, exploding its enriched guts across the galaxy, scattering it into gas clouds that would ultimately collapse and make a star and have the right ingredients to make planets and people. Which means we are part of this universe as I've said many times, and this is, goes back, the, the, not only are we in the universe, the universe is in us. That is a profound concept. And it was, I think it's the greatest gift that astrophysics gave culture in the 20th century. So scientists don't lead marching armies. Scientists don't invade other nations. Scientists, yes, we have scientists who, who invented the bomb. Yes, but somebody had to pay for the bomb, and that was taxpayers. That was war bonds. There was a political action that called for it. So everyone blames the scientists. We are collectively part of a society that is passing, that is, that is, that is using or not using to its benefit or to its detriment the discoveries made by science. And at the end of the day, a discovery itself is not moral. It's our application of it that takes that, that has to pass that test. Congress is uh, considering pulling the plug on the uh, James Webb Space Telescope, which is the successor. Don't to get the... me started. No, I want to get you started. This is the, the the successor to the Hubble, and they say it can peer into the universe and maybe see the moment when the universe was born. I don't even know how that happens. Uh, but it costs six point eight billion dollars. Which... Well, first of all, let's clarify what what the NASA budget is. The bank bailout. That sum of money could reach Venus. <laughs> <laughs> that sum of money is greater than the entire 50-year running budget of NASA. Wow. And so when someone says, we don't have enough money for this space probe, I'm asking, no, it's not that you don't have enough money. It's that the distribution of money that you're spending is warped in some way that you are removing the only thing that gives people something to dream about tomorrow. Do you, you remember the 60s? Do you remember the 60s and 70s? You didn't, you didn't have to go more than a week before there's an article in, 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 in Life magazine, the, the, the home of tomorrow, the city of tomorrow, transportation of tomorrow, all that ended. In the, in, in the 1970s, after we stopped going to the moon, it all ended. We stopped dreaming. And so I worry that decisions that Congress makes doesn't factor in the consequences of those decisions on tomorrow. Tomorrow's gone. You know what? We, we the, playing, the playing for tomorrow, metaphoric tomorrow, not the literal tomorrow. They're playing for the quarterly report. They're playing for the next election cycle. And that is mortgaging the actual future of this nation. The rest of the country, the rest of the world, is going to pass it by. Those who deny climate change, what do you say to them? Uh, the, I, in a free country, which at least we believe, we, we tell ourselves we live in a free country, I, I, don't, I don't care what you believe. You believe whatever you want. The problem comes about is if you are in denial of an emergent scientific truth and you wield power over legislation. That's a recipe for disaster. The person on the street doesn't care about climate change or doesn't, you know, maybe I'll, we'll have a conversation, but I'm not going to lose sleep over that. It's when someone, an elected official, stands in denial of climate change, something that scientists have been telling them now for decades, and they're going to create legislation in response to that. What, that is the end of an informed democracy. The end. I love when they say, I don't know anything about it, but... 
but it's not true. <laughs> I don't really yeah. think but yeah. it's not and, true. And so, by the way, I don't beat politicians over the head. You'll never see me arguing with a politician. You know why? Because politicians, representatives, senators, they are duly elected by a community of people, the electorate. So if they want to say the Earth is 6,000 years old, it's probably because their electorate thinks so. And so as an educator, my task is to educate the electorate so that they could then vote people into office who can make sensible legislative decisions that can affect us all and not derive from their personal private belief system. Exactly. Okay, th it is true. We fear death because we are born knowing only life. Right. I get that. However, I, I, I t take another view because I've been asked, if you could live forever, would you? Yes. <laughs> okay, we're Don't done in the have interview. To this sentence. Yes. Uh, no. Okay. Sure. That's an attractive idea, but the way I look at it is, it is the knowledge that I'm going to die that creates the focus that I bring to being alive. The urgency of accomplishment, the need to express love. Now, not later. If we live forever, why ever even get out of bed in the morning? Because you always have tomorrow. That's not the kind of life I want to lead. But why, don't you fear not being around? I fear living a life where I could have accomplished something and didn't. That's what I fear. I, I don't fear death. You don't fear the unknown. I love the unknown. I, 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 this, I, I love the, you know what I want on my tombstone? My sister has this in her, in her notes, because in case I can't tell anyone after I die. On my tombstone, a quote from Horace Mann, great educator. Be ashamed to die until you have scored some victory for humanity. That's what I want on my tombstone. But you don't fear or, or think about not being around. My great regret it. for not being around would be, it would be kind of cool to see my kids continue yeah, to Don't grow. you want to know that? Yeah, that'd be, I would, that'd be fun. I want to see what inventions would make life easier, what clever discoveries or innovations would arise out of the collective brain work what do of you my think, species. What do you think when you see religious people, when you see popes or rabbis or people who fervently believe, the Billy Grahams mm -hmm. of the world, who are sincere and wonderful people. Yeah, of course. Who actually may be delusional that they're going somewhere. No, they're, they're, they're embedded in belief systems. And what I look at is I see all the belief systems, and when you line them up, they're not really compatible with one another. So whatever they're believing, it can't be a truth that applies to everybody because other people believe what they do with no less fervor. And so I sit back and as a person who's interested in, ob in objective truths and I say, well, it doesn't look like that's a path towards an objective truth. So let people continue to think and say what they want. But as a citizen of a country that is not founded on a on a, on, a, on a religion, it's founded with, with sort of a secular construct in a way that protects whatever religion you want to express. This is protected in the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't actually mention God. Right. R rather controversial in its day. And the, the, it doesn't mention God because they don't want legislation to tell you what God to worship. They knew this. They knew how governments can persecute people who had belief systems that didn't agree with the state. They knew this. So they created those freedoms. And so we have these freedoms. Go ahead. But if you're going to create legislation that has to apply to everybody, and you're now going to put your belief system into legislation, that is not a free and open democracy. Yeah, but Victor, okay. But <laughs> no, I'm okay with that. But. Even if we didn't yet have an answer to it, we should not be ashamed of not having answers to all questions yet. So you shouldn't somehow take the list of questions that the religious community poses to science and say, well, what was around before the Big Bang? And there were this and after death. And I said, I don't know yet. 
and go on to the next problem. And, and I'm perfectly happy staring somebody in the face saying, I don't know yet. I, and we got top people working on it. And, and so the, the, the moment you feel compelled to provide an answer, then you're doing the same thing that the religious community does, providing answers to every possible question. By the way, what science also does is not only answer well-posed questions, it also can put you in a position to judge whether, in fact, the question has meaning in the first place. And because not just because you put nouns and verbs in the right sequence doesn't mean your question has to have any sense at all. If you, if you ask, what is the square root of a pork chop? That doesn't, at what temperature does the numeral seven melt? These, just because you asked that question doesn't obligate me to say, hey, let's, let's fund the lab to answer it. And so, so science inquiry is also, half of that effort is constructing the questions in the first place. So if you want to become a scientist, you have to learn to love the questions just as much as the answer, because in fact, in some cases, you don't even get to an answer. You find out you're, 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 you're navigating the wrong path. So the people who say, oh, gra a graduate school is a pay, I can't, uh, that's, that is science. What you're doing as a graduate student is becoming a research scientist, and that's what you do. You work long hours, you're in the lab, you occasionally forego personal hygiene. You know, there is, <laughs> This is what that is, okay? I bet you Darwin and Newton did not smell very good, all right, is my guess, okay? N Newton, while he is discovering calculus, all right, he's probably not saying, oh, I need a shower about now. No, he's pretty focused doing what he's doing, all right? And so, so that's where I derive my energy to share the passion. Now... I would do so no matter what, but there's a more important reason for doing it, and that is most pure research in the sciences that goes on in America today, that's not product-driven, goes on at universities, and the source of those monies are from public-based, tax-based funding agencies. So, collectively, we pay taxes, to the country's portfolio of spending, some of which funds the science that's conducted by scientists. As a result, the science that's done, the scientist that conducts the research, is obligated to the public to share with them the fruits of their research. The public paid for it. And I submit to you that there was an era before that was taken seriously. There was an era where the scientists in the lab would say, the press is beneath me. I have, they'll probably get my story wrong. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Leave me alone. That happened only to the peril of the funding stream that went into those labs. And the first person to realize this in a big way was, in fact, Carl Sagan, because what happened was he would start bringing science to the public. He did it sort of first and best. And colleagues said, what, you're on The Tonight Show? You're a scientist, and you'd stoop to go on The Tonight? And he was criticized for this, criticized. Meanwhile, the scientific community saw their budgets rise. And so in astrophysics, we learned earlier than in other fields the value, the general value, of bringing the fruits of our research to the public. And I can tell you that I don't know if I'm biased. Probably I am, but maybe a little bit is not. I think Hubble images are pretty cool. I think these pictures I showed you tonight are kind of awesome. I think, I think all of us, at some point, we look up and wonder what our place is in this universe and a small fraction of the total population gets to actually call that their career.